chased up the stairs from the television studio to the radio studio. It's quite something. So let's just listen to a bit more of this while I get my breath back. Good morning. Uh, Keith Hayes broadcasting from Lewis on Rouser Radio. Lewis on the southeast coast of the UK. Because the wonderful thing about WWW is we don't just broadcast to those people that we try to inform, but uh, to a good many parts of the world. And I know that from time to time, or not time to time, we have some regular uh, listeners abroad who um, in- enjoy hearing uh, what life is like here and some of the problems we're facing, because what we found is that these problems are universal. Most people have got very similar problems in at least open market and democratic societies. And uh, they like to hear, A, what we're having to put up with and be how we're trying to resolve it and the fact of the matter is at the moment <laughs> there's not much that uh, <laughs> that we're able to resolve but anyway uh, the, the the point really is i think that in a democracy we are allowed without being thrown into prison to ask questions of those who govern us and i think the main question now is um, isn't it time to put away your toys look at what we're, is happening in both the world, the region, the locality, the local locality, and to say it, it's broke. Now, sometimes people use the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But in this particular case, our system is broke. Uh, we've got now professional politicians there is almost nobody at any level that doesn't get money into their pockets for being a councillor or an MP or an EU MP or MEP or whatever the hell we call them. Uh, it, it's all become a profession, and as a consequence, the check becomes the most important thing. Okay, the check is important to all of us, uh, but uh, not at the levels that they've managed to uh, provide for themselves in the European Union, in Parliament, uh, and uh, to some extent locally. Parliament is a disgrace. They have subsidised this, subsidised that, subsidised the other, to the point where just three or four years ago, if you recall, it was a scandal. It was a scandal. Uh, we were paying for birdhouses on islands in an MP's lake in his garden. <laughs> I mean, we were paying for all sorts of things, so second homes, second houses, relatives working for them. Uh, I mean, the rules say quite clearly that they can have relatives working for them. Yeah, that's a, that's a good EU ploy too, because they do the same thing. Patronage is rife in the European Union, and it's rife in, in our own Parliament. You know, I'm sorry, but patronage is a form of corruption. And if you're not prepared to get rid of that and you don't even understand that it is, what hope is there for getting rid of royal, real corruption? You know, come on, guys, get your finger out and start to take a look. Now, I, my understanding is from talking to a councillor the other day that at least at our local level, the change is in the air. And uh, since I heard it uh, from him, and he seemed to know what he was talking about, not only seemed to, but uh, he was a man for whom I would have had um, considerable respect, uh, and that uh, he would have been uh, quite straight, in fact, I know he was being quite straight, in saying that uh, this problem that we have with governance, uh, to which many people close their eyes, uh, is, uh, is, is under stress, under strain. And that was Boris Johnson's uh, theme speech, three or four weeks ago, is we've got to change the governance of our country. Now, you know, we, we see Boris uh, like Marmite, and indeed we, we see Rouser Radio and uh, Mirador Television like Marmite. Uh, you, you either love us, you hate us, uh, uh, but you never forget us. And <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> and, and Boris is much like that, but he made a great deal of common sense when he made the speech uh, uh, the other night. And a change is in the air, and change has to be in the air. And if we've got an election coming up in May, locally, it's time for us to let our councillors and our executive know that, that the way that things are at the moment, they've got to come to an end. They're covert, first of all. Nobody really knows what the hell's going on inside the councils. Not even the councillors. As one of my inside informants said, and laughed when I told them what the issue was, and they said, don't worry, the, the executive will, will twist those councillors around their little finger. They'll make them believe that they've been given the absolute honest truth about a situation while carrying on like Sir Humphrey uh, and, and doing whatever it is that, that they want and that isn't going to upset their nice little lives and uh, it was nice little lives really that I was talking about with the MPs because uh, they have uh, they, they were found out about all these bonus things that they've got uh, and uh, the House of Commons uh, uh, watch go- watchdog the, the people that actually look into these sort of things to see whether MPs are breaking the rules uh, uh, ruled that there are lots of things that they couldn't do. So what did they do? They quietly got into a committee room about three or four weeks ago and said uh, well the, uh, we, we're doing away with it no longer can MPs be investigated for this now that's bloody outrageous it really is. But it's the way that, uh, that politicians now who pick up a paycheck has nothing to do with serving their community anymore. They pick up a paycheck that's what it's all about uh, and that they want they want more on that paycheck, they want bonuses, and they want this, that, and the other, and they want to carve out a nice career for themselves because some of these stupid bloody companies hire them after they've finished. These people have never done a day's work in their lives, most of them, and yet they govern us, they make rules that we have to follow, laws that we have to follow, and in our constitutional monarchy which doesn't have a constitution what happens in the house of commons is far more important in many ways than it is in other constitutional monarchies or actually in the constitution of any other states whether they're a constitutional monarchy or, or some other form of government is uh, you, you know we we are bound by rule of law and rule of law comes directly out of the house of commons in this country okay it's subject to some uh, checks and balances but nonetheless it is rule of law and if they can't do that properly we're all in a mess and they don't seem to be able to do it properly what they're doing is they're stuffing their pockets and I think that this is very naughty and believe me if you want to say wow does that guy sound as if he's left wing or whatever (laughs) I've been a staunch conservative all my life but what I'm looking at at the moment is a plague on all their parties because we're not getting value for money, we're not getting decent people in charge, we're, we're getting lies and counter lies being passed to us, uh, we're getting so called PR, and it's not PR. Uh, it, it, you know, it, I, when I'm in London and I'm talking to some of these people from West African countries that one time we would have laughed at and said they don't know how to look, rule themselves, govern themselves, uh, but uh, uh, people like the Ghanaians uh, uh, and, and people in actually uh, Qatar uh, and in Jordan is they have a much better idea of how to govern themselves uh, than we do uh, and because we're so remote and we've got this feeling that uh, uh, we, we Brits are a bit superior to absolutely everybody in the world is we're, we, we're not looking at ourselves we're not doing the check and balance which we should and that is let us do a survey of us and let's do a check of us because that's the only way we're going to get good governance. <laughs> oh, I have woken up with a spark this morning on a Friday, haven't I? Well, what the heck? You know, it, it, it's when I start to be embarrassed about my own country talking to uh, somebody from the Gulf, uh, then it, I think it's, uh, it's time that we start to uh, take a serious, serious look at ourselves and ask for change. And that isn't to do with Brexit or not Brexit, or, or whether we stay or we go, or, or, or whether we keep constitutional democracy or not. It's to do with change within the system. It's got to happen. Ooh, OK, Friday. And tonight, in Hove, there is a chance for you to see free, in concert, Dandelion Charm. So, the last couple of days, I've had the privilege of being able to play uh, their latest piece of music, which they sent to me, and it's called September, and it's rather pleasant. Uh, So, I'm going to play it, because that may stir you to go along and see them tonight 
in a hove. So here it is, September from Dandelion Charm. Is not blue. Is not blue. 